you uh, were able to join us here on a Friday morning. And on Fridays, we're also joined by our very own movie guy. He is Matt Evans, and Matt joins us on the phone to talk about not only some of the uh, new movies opening in theaters this weekend, but also some entertainment news that he's been following over the past week. So, hello, Matt. Hello, good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, and what a beautiful Friday it is, too. It is. It's uh, fantastic. It's uh, springtime is here. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, too. Tomorrow is uh, St. Patty's Day. Right, where everybody is Irish for the day. That's exactly right. Or do you have any Irish heritage in your family? Uh, my grandmother used to call us a Heinz 57. I probably do somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that, that's as far as I know. But on, on, on March 17th, it doesn't matter. Everybody's Irish. Tomorrow. Right, exactly. March 17th, you're Irish, and on Cinco de Mayo, you're Mexican. It's just how it works. Exactly. Uh, and I know that this will interest you, uh, because I'm pretty sure you're a fan. Tomorrow is Kurt Russell's 67th birthday. 67th birthday. Yes. Doesn't look a day over 80. <laughs> what, uh, do you have a particular uh, Kurt Russell fan that stands out among others, in your opinion? Uh, was it Overboard? Overboard? Yeah. That's the one you're going with out of yeah, all of Yeah. That? I know it's terrible, but when I was a kid, I was like, I don't know, mommy, seven, eight maybe. Uh, I watched the movie, and I just, I loved it. I mean, how could you go wrong? Kurt Russell or Goldie Hawn, it was just fantastically funny. I think I, I almost have to go with, uh, I could probably go with any John Carpenter film that he was in, but probably Big Trouble in Little China is one that, that probably ranks right up there at the top for me. Clearly my second choice. Uh, then there's what, Escape from uh, L.A. that's up there as well. Yep. Yeah, I mean, just uh, you, you really can't go wrong with a Kurt Russell movie. No. I mean, uh, maybe it's just that I'm, I'm feeling a little nostalgic. They're remaking Overboard as a TV movie, and I've been reading about that, so maybe it's just my nostalgia kicking in. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I was a kid, honest to goodness, that would, that would be my pick for best Kurt Russell movie. Yeah, Gina and I were talking about that the other day. They're actually reversing the, the male-female roles in the remake of Overboard, right? Yeah, it's a popular thing to do nowadays, a kind of a role reversal of characters. And, uh, we, you know, we've talked about diversity in filmmaking over the, the past couple of weeks with some of the big movies coming out, Wrinkle in Time and Black Panther and whatnot. And I think it's great. I think it is, is awesome. It's about time that we finally start giving some of these women leading roles in these movies instead of just kind of making, making them fodder for the male characters. Sure. Well, let's get into it, Matt. Uh, we've got some new movies opening this weekend, but also I'm sure you've got plenty of uh, movie news to talk about this week. Yeah, let's start off with the movies open this weekend because we've got a couple of really good ones and uh, one that is very surprising. So the, t the two biggest movies coming out this week are classic video game turned movie franchise, Tomb Raider, starring Alicia Vikander. Mm -hmm. um, it, it looks amazing. If you guys remember the, the Angelina Jolie movies, they were a little less than stellar. Mm -hmm. uh, this one seems to be grounded more in realism than some of the other ones, which is, uh, and that's what they did with the character. As, as video games kind of evolved, she was famous for her uh, polygon physique, I guess would be the best way to put it, when, sure. uh, you know, in the, the late 90s and stuff. And they've kind of grounded the character more in realism in the video games, and they're following the trend with the movie, and I think, I think it's going to turn out to be a really good one. And that's hard to say, because video game movies are genuinely terrible most of the time. Looks pretty good to me, and it's got Waltz and Goggins in it. And that dude, he, is, he can make a movie. He chews up every scene that he's in, basically. Right, he's like one of those actors, there's a certain actors that, that no matter what is going on the screen, they, they command y your attention, and he's one of them, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he's another one that no matter mm -hmm. what he's doing, they just, they just eat the scenery around him, and um, they're just fun to watch, actors like that. Yeah. So Tomb Raider opens this weekend, uh, what else we got new this week? Uh, we got a uh, kind of an interesting twist on a, a classic teen coming-of-age story, uh, Love, Simon's out, it's getting rave reviews. Uh, it's a you know teen coming of age coming out, so it's kind of a a new take, a, a modern take, I guess would be a, a good way to put it, on a, on kind of the teen life. Uh, it's about this boy that uh, hasn't told his family that his, his family and friends that he's gay, uh, but he falls for a stranger on the internet that goes to his high school, and so as he figures out both of those things while also being a teenager, it it turns out in a very hilarious way. So it's a really great movie. I actually got a chance to see a screening of it last night. Uh, and I was impressed. It's it's really heartwarming. It's it's just it's a fun film. Okay, and then we've got uh, one other new movie out this week, right? 
Yeah, this one is actually more exciting to me than than uh, it should be, I guess. But I'm a huge fan of the band Mercy Me. It's a Christian gospel band. Mm-hmm. Um, a big fan of the their song, their hit song. I can only imagine my dad. A lot of people may know that my dad was a preacher most of my life, and so I was influenced by a lot of that. And uh, this movie's out today. It's uh, you know I can only imagine it's based on the lead singer Bart Miller's childhood, his abusive childhood, uh, growing up, and what inspired him to write the song. Um, and what's uh, crazy about this movie is that it is sitting at Rotten Tomato audience score of 98%. Wow. Um, so the audiences are loving it. And even more surprisingly, the critic score is at 80%. That's big time. Big time. That's huge. That's huge. I mean, when you see movies like this, like, for example, God's Not Dead mm-hmm. um, was a, another big Christian film. Movies like that don't typically draw a wide audience. They draw right. a specific audience. And so the people that see movies like that are more inclined to give it a higher rating. So it's not uncommon to see a very high audience score on a movie like that, but a very low critic score. Um, having 80% critic score is, is fantastic. Just for example, um, God's Not Dead, like we just were saying, its critic score is sitting at 17%. Um, and that's just in Christian movies. If we look at like major releases, Boondock Saves critic score, 20%. Spaceball sitting at 54%. So to have an 80% critic score for a movie that has got a very targeted audience is fantastic. Yeah, no kidding. I watched the trailer to uh, for I Can Only Imagine, and I was tearing up watching the trailer. So I can, I can only imagine that you're going to need to bring some tissues with you uh, if you go see this film. Right, and I'm, i got to say, I'm a little biased about this film as well. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the band Mercy Me. Uh, also, a buddy of mine, Charles Walker, is an actor from here in, in the area. Uh, he was a regular patron at our theater when we had it open here in Norman, and that's how I met him. He actually has a, a small role in this movie. Cool. Uh, so not only is it, a, is it a, you know, a great Dennis Quaid movie, a good family film to bring you know, your, entire, your entire group to, uh, it's also got a local boy in it, so you know, go support the local people. Yeah, definitely. And Dennis Quaid looks like he turns in uh, quite a performance. Just watching the trailer, Dennis Quaid always turns in a performance, though. I mean, like he, Dennis Quaid is another one of those actors that no matter what he's doing, it's just like you have to watch him. Right. Talking to our movie guy Matt Evans here on a Friday. Those are the new movies that are out this weekend. Now, what else is new this week, Matt? Well, we got uh, Marvel has released uh, the Infinity Wars final trailer. Uh, that's their big blockbuster coming out April 27th now. Uh, and it's, it's a really good trailer. If you don't want to be spoiled at all, I would stay away from it. Uh, and I'm not going to get too spoilery with it. Uh, but there is a scene in this trailer that, that teams up uh, Chris Pratt's Star-Lord with Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Mm-hmm. And the 10-second exchange pretty much encapsulates everything that is great about Mar- Marvel movies. <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. It's great. It looks like it's going to be, uh, the trailers kind of set it up to be like this really awesome action film with, you know, magic sorcerers, aliens, and robot mech suits, but also very human in its appeal, which is, I mean, that's hard to do. It looks really great. I'm excited for this one. Almost as excited as I was for Black Panther. Uh, And Black Panther's still tearing it up at the box office, too. Black Panther still is tearing it up at the box office, which is great because it's one of those movies that uh, it's, a, it's a superhero movie, um, but in, in some senses it's bigger than that. It's, it's almost become a movement now. Right. What else is making news this week, Matt? We have some bad news coming out of the superhero genre right oh, now. No. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of sad to report, but Deadpool 2's test screenings are not going well. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, Deadpool was a major hit. It was one of the highest-grossing R-rated movies of all time. It showed that an adult, a truly adult audience, could really get behind the superhero genre. Um, but the test test audiences that are screening this movie are saying that it's it's not as good as the first one, and some of them are are, are just downright awful. Um, they are they're not allowed to give details because of a non-disclosure agreement, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, it's trickling out a little bit, and they're saying now that they're going to go in and do more reshoots. And as we've talked about before, reshoots are almost never a good thing. Right. In in a case of something like that, it, it's almost like they they did too good of a job on the first Deadpool movie. So where where do you go from there after you you did uh, you know as as good as you could possibly uh, do with that character in in the first film, which was a huge success. Yeah, that's actually one of the points I had written down in my notes for today was to bring up the fact that Deadpool 1 was such a huge hit that it's really hard to follow that up. Um, Sequels almost never perform as well as the first. It's just kind of, uh, you know, the the downside of being a follow-up to a smash hit is that you have to do even better, and even better than than Amazing is really hard for anybody to top. Right. Deadpool 2 is out, what, middle of May? 
It is, yeah, May. May. So they've got to, for them to be starting reshoots now, that's very worrisome. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them push back the release date by a couple weeks. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, anything else uh, that uh, we need to know about? couple positive news stories really quick uh, before we go since we had a, such a down note with Deadpool 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg's ode to everything 80s and video games and nostalgia. Uh, the, the posters were ripped apart on Twitter and on the Internet. Uh, the movie just did not have a lot of good positive buzz going into it. Audiences are coming out of the test screening floored by how good it is. So instead of being this just, you know, a nostalgia sucker punch just trying to get the, the you know, those warm and fuzzies. People are saying it's a genuinely, genuinely good movie, uh, and that's really great because I'm, I'm a big fan of Spielberg. I mean, ev- who's not a fan mm-hmm. of Spielberg? Let's be honest. Um, but, but hearing about how you, nobody was excited for this film, and then finding out that it's, it's, you know, exciting audiences now that they've seen it. That's, I mean, really good news, and I, I'm excited for that one. Good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that too because um, I'm excited to see to see that one. It, it looks like an epic, classic Steven Spielberg movie. It really does, in every sense. Like, it's the kind of movie that it could have come out in the late 80s, early 90s, and it would have fit right in. And, and that is literally Spielberg's prime, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, you got one other thing? One other thing. Uh, Ava DuVernay, she just uh, is getting rave reviews for her directing of A Wrinkle in Time uh, as being, you know, visually stunning and just amazing. She has been tapped to direct a DC movie. So she's going to direct New Gods, uh, which is... The easiest way to explain it for non-comic book geeks would be DC's answer to Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a, it's a cosmic kind of title, uh, but it's got some really good characters, and it's got a really diverse cast, uh, lots of women you know, and stuff like that as far as that goes. So Ava is a really great choice to direct this movie. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they do with it, and there's some really great fan castings out there already of some of the characters. And, uh, you know, people want this big Barda. She's not a very super famous character, uh, but people are screaming for Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones. And as soon as I saw the side-by-side of the two characters, I was like, if they don't do that, they're failing us miserably. (laughs) All right. Well, Matt, good stuff as always. We appreciate you uh, filling us in on some of the things uh, going on in uh, the entertainment world. So enjoy this uh, beautiful weather and uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys want more of this, I, I tweet all the time. It's pretty much the only thing I do besides talk to you guys on the radio. You can follow me on Twitter at yup underscore Matt Evans. Okay, very good. If you want to keep up with Matt, check him out on Twitter. Matt, thanks so much. We'll talk to you next week. All right, you guys have a great day.